Hello and welcome to Ruckasaurus Rex, the channel devoted to all things dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. Yes indeed, what we're going to uh, take a look at today is Doyle, technically Doyle 2.0. This is courtesy of PNSO. This is a museum line model and uh, just like the previous Doyle, the Triceratops, which was also a, uh, a museum line model, uh, we get, uh, as you can see here from the box, we've got an illustration of Doyle as well as an included skull, which is uh, a great addition considering it is a, uh, uh, a museum line uh, model. The previous Doyle came with a stand, so yeah, you had to come up with something instead of just the dino. So you can see that nice illustration of the uh, of the model. Looking at the rest of the box, you have the PNSO logo there in the front, nothing there. PNSO on that side, and uh, that's really about the size of it. So let's get the box opened up and see uh, what we have inside. As uh, previously stated, we get this uh, replica of a Triceratops skull. This skull is based off of the uh, Triceratops that they have at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. And uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty nice, pretty detailed. It's got the weathering just like it a fossil wood so uh, yeah pretty nice uh, pretty nice accessory to come along with uh, the dinosaur itself also standard with museum line models from PNSO you get this uh, this uh, this this folder that's filled with uh, mostly posters so yeah that's uh, that is something I'm, some people like the fact they get a whole bunch of posters others get annoyed by it but they usually have some nice posters in there. So let's uh, open her up and see what we can see. I'm going to try to do this without tearing the sticker. We'll see how successful I am. And I am successful. So as you can see, there is plenty of product inside this, uh, this little folder. I'll put that to the side. And... Uh, Let's see what we have here. This is just like a little preface booklet. Not even going to bother opening that. Here's the uh, the main booklet. This has all the info. Doyle Triceratops Scientific Art Exhibition. You look in here and you start getting photos and illustrations and all kinds of um, all kinds of info. It's uh, mostly written as though, you know, for kids, which is crazy considering how much these, uh, these figures cost and how, uh, you know, how realistic they are, how detailed they are. They don't look like toys. Here's an, an illustration of Doyle taken outside. And this is what I'm talking about. This is the model. And when you look at it, it, it looks as though it's a real, it's a living creature. You put it in the right settings, it, that it's just uncanny. That's why I'm really on PNSO these days. Here's some more. Look at a couple more and then you guys, you get the gist. I'm not going to spend all day going through the, the booklets and stuff. Now we've got a bunch of posters. Let's see what we got. Some drawing paper, it looks like right here. Yes, this is all drawing paper. Good. Get to move that to the side. Here we go with the posters. Triceratops. You've got uh, a frill of a uh, Titanoceratops. This is a different species of Ceratopsian. And here you go. More of Doyle. What else do we have here? And you see you get it's a whole bunch of you can almost see why some people get annoyed with um, all of these posters um, they get annoyed because they don't feel uh, that it should be you know the, the price point is justified and the price point by the way I hadn't stated that yet is uh, 59 just under 60 bucks 
for Doyle. That's uh, the, the museum line price. So you see they've got some, they do have some nice posters here, but uh, it probably is too many. I'm going to, uh, let's see if we got bigger ones. Yeah, I'll get to the, uh, the larger ones. See if they're anything more impressive. And you've got like that. What else do we have here? See, now here's something. You get uh, comparisons. So that's cool. You've got uh, the Triceratops. Uh, if you've ever seen um, a woolly mammoth, there is one that was uh, frozen, restored. So look at the Triceratops compared to a woolly mammoth. So that gives you an idea how big trikes were. And then on the other, you know, up there, you got a, a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, displayed uh, compared with a white rhino and a blue wildebeest. So you get an idea how big Tyrannosaurus Rex was. So yeah, that pretty nice uh, poster right there. Got another one of uh, Doyle. This will be the last one. I'm not going to go through all of these. So you get the gist. So yeah, that's enough of the posters. Here we have Doyle on our rotating platter so you can look at him 360 degrees. See him front to back and side to side. And uh, very nice figure here. We're going to compare him with the first iteration of Doyle Triceratops. So you'll definitely clearly see the differences. And then, uh, of course, you can determine which one uh, you prefer better. So, um, yep, he's looking pretty nice there. Uh, the paint apps, the color, is uh, it's kind of drabish. But um, if you've seen any of my uh, previous videos, you've already heard my take on um, the coloration on large animals. Uh, they're usually a duller color. So, uh, and uh, with uh, some of the other dinosaur lines where they'll have their models, um, I mean, crazy colorful. For me, a lot of times it, it takes away from it because, you know, I know in my head that uh, certain creatures would not be that colorful. So, um, I lose something for them. But uh, that's not the case with PNSO, even though I, I must admit they probably could make the... Uh, they could spice up the colorations on some of their figs um, a little bit more. So I will say that. Uh, anyhow, enough of that. Let's get Doyle off of the, uh, the platter and uh, take a closer look at him, shall we? As he uh, comes around the way one final time. So here we have Doyle, the Triceratops off the base. And uh, just a little bit of history about Triceratops. It was one of the last known dinosaurs. It was... Uh, one of the largest ceratopsians at uh, coming in at uh, about 26 and some change to 29 and some change feet. This model uh, measures 9.9 uh, inches and about three and a half inches tall. Um, when you get to uh, somewhere in the back, he's about four and a half if you go to the top of the frill, something like that. At the 9.9, .9, almost 10 inches long, if you use the 135 scale, which is the basis for PNSO, they're normally 135 scale. That puts this animal just under 29 feet, so it'll fit in perfectly with your 135 scale critters. And uh, yeah, it's more or less a full grown trike. So there you have it. As far as this model is concerned, the first thing we'll take note of is it does have an articulated jaw which is uh, rare for um, anything non-carnivorous with PNSO or most other model lines as well. But um, they do bless us with articulated, jaw articulated jaws, excuse me, with their larger ceratopsians, which of course previously to this large ceratopsian was also another triceratops or the previous triceratops, I should say, who also went by the name of Doyle. So if you look, the thing that really stands out is how long those eye horns are. Um, once again, this Triceratops is based off of the uh, skeleton in the American Museum of Natural History. I've been there dozens of times and I can't front, I don't recall those eye horns uh, being that long. So um, 
that's uh, it's pretty unusual. Taking a look at those horns, let's get in uh, closer because I want you guys to see something. If, if you look, you can see there are uh, rings uh, there um, stemming from the base of the horns coming out. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if those are supposed to be age rings. You know, a lot of times animals, uh, you can usually tell how old they are. I believe the way they kind of sort of figure out how old dinosaurs are, they'll um, cut into bones to see the rings and the bones, and they'll determine the age of the uh, of the creature in question. But um, yeah, that's what you have there with uh, with this Triceratops. You see the uh, the paint apps that got the uh, the tips of the horns are. Uh, like a blackish color and you see the uh, the two-tone um, with the skull it starts out dark and you see the uh, the eyes I like the eyes it's uh, kind of reddish with uh, black pupils and uh, the nose horn there you can see the uh, the wrinkles the scalation looking in that mouth with the uh, articulated jaw that's about as far as the jaw will open which is alright pretty cool Try to peek in that mouth there. You see it's got the nice wet look. You can see that the front of the beak, the uh, the animal has no teeth, and but you can see the teeth there in the back. And you can see uh, down there below. And uh, now that we've uh, taken a look at the head, let's zoom out to uh, see the rest of Doyle. Peeping out the rest of Doyle, we'll... Uh, Look at the uh, scalation. You see the scoots and uh, the uh, fine scales along the body. Looking at that neck, he's got a nice uh, thick neck. There's uh, no real coloration at the back of the frill. Not that I think there should be. Some people think it should have been colored more, but you know everybody has their preferences. Looking at that neck, you could see some wrinkles down there at the neck, and then you see. Uh, the underbelly there looking at the legs you see that color it's kind of like a, a brown mix it's a, a kind of a uh, it's a greenish brown I guess when you look at um, how the uh, the color transitions from the dark to the light you could see uh, the wrinkles there which is pretty cool got the uh, the short tail looking at the uh, the feet, the toes painted nicely, pretty cool. Accuracy with the uh, four toes in the back and the five in the front, so that's cool. Turn to the other side, you can see uh, attention to detail here. You see, since this right leg, rear leg is drawn back, you can see the stretching of the skin, so you love that attention to detail. And then you've got the uh, the front leg. Uh, 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 it's already stepped forward if it was on the ground so yeah it's uh pretty nice you can do the uh, the butt check and sure enough it has a cloaca and uh, more of that scalation and uh, pretty nice Doyle is uh, definitely uh, a very uh, nice very nice model of a Triceratops now I'll be showing you comparing the old slash original Doyle with uh, our new guy here and you can clearly see the differences you can see the differences in the frills for sure uh, you can also see uh, note that uh, the uh, frill of the original Doyle has the, the, the bony knobs going along the frill whereas you don't really see that the frills are also differently shaped uh, on um, Doyle we'll call them Doyle 2.0 you see that that frill has more of a uh, chasmosaurian type of uh, shape to it as opposed to the roundish shape that the original Doyle has and you see that the original Doyle has um, a lot more coloring going on with his frill and of course the most notable thing is how short the original Doyle's horns are compared to our new guy. They're um, approximately the same length. I believe the new Doyle is a little bit, by a hair, a little bit longer. 
and uh, yep, but that's probably <laughs> because of those horns that he's uh, a bit longer. So yeah, they're both uh, definitely in scale with one another. So if you had the one and you want to get the other, you can you can play the role and uh, have them both. The other difference is uh, the original Doyle has. Uh, and the name is still escaping me what these would be uh, the beginning stages of, um, uh, of, of feathering uh, going along there they uh, PNSO I'm speaking of did away with that for the new Doyle so uh, it does not have that but uh, yeah that's uh, that's the comparison with the original Doyle uh, up against our new guy and of course the comparison that everyone is waiting to see. You've got Doyle, the Triceratops, Doyle 2.0, the Triceratops up against Wilson 2.0, aka Winter Wilson, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And uh, yep, these these two look, uh, they look great together. I think later on I'm going to look at that poster that shows uh, Triceratops and uh, the Tyrannosaurus. You know how they had them um, up against uh, for size comparisons, Woolly Mammoth and all that. I want to see what uh, that illustration looks in comparison to this. Doyle, Doyle's a big boy. Doyle's definitely a big boy. And um, at first glance, you may think that he's oversized, but both Wilson and Doyle are, uh, they are in scale with whatever at, at, at their uh, respective uh, uh, sizes. They're in scale with what they would be if they were uh, living creatures. So um, I, they look good to me. You guys tell me what you think. So in conclusion, our Doyle 2.0, very nice uh, figure model from PNSO. Uh, he's a redo from the old version of Doyle. And uh, as much as I uh, love that figure, and I still do, I uh, really like this version. Uh, I think the uh, paint apps could uh, be a little bit a little bit more vibrant I think that's a good uh, description um, without being uh, overly flamboyant but um, you know it is what it is PNSO does have that uh, the reputation for uh, pretty drab paint apps um, but uh, they make up for it with the detail that they give the figures you know that attention to detail is uh, unparalleled so you gotta like that or Doyle, he has that articulated jaw. Um, he's uh, in scale. Uh, if you're going with the 135, technically he's a 136 scale. Uh, 136 scale at 9.9 .9 inches would put him at uh, just under 30 feet. He'd be like 29.7 uh, uh, or something like that. Whereas going by the the 135th scale, he's uh, just under 29 feet. So it works either way. Uh, yeah, pretty good. He looks great uh, going up against uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex or uh, any other creatures that he uh, lived beside, such as like Ankylosaurus, etc. And uh, yeah, there's not much more I can say. Uh, once again, uh, this is a museum line model from PNSO, so um, got a higher pr price point. The other great thing is uh, he comes with this skull. That's based off of uh, the uh, the skull in the American Museum of Natural History. In fact, uh, the skull is based on that, and uh, Doyle himself is based on the skeleton in that very museum. So, uh, pretty good, with the exception of those horns. I still I don't get why the horns are so long. I like the horns; it's pretty dramatic. Um, but um, I'm still like uh, tripping on the horns being that large. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Uh, the accuracy is there for sure. And uh, yeah, pretty good. So uh, we're going to uh, conclude uh, this this uh, review of Doyle 2.0, the Triceratops. This is Ruckasaurus Rex. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please leave comments. Please hit that bell so you can be notified when I upload another video. And uh, thank you for uh, tuning into this channel. Please uh Give me your support. All right. Thank you. Take care.